Attention all viewers, the program you are about to watch, Searching for Sasquatch, is for entertainment purposes. Accounts described by guests are claimed to be true and accurate. Some names have been changed to protect individual privacy. Jason Kenzie is an expert animal adventurer with 25 years of field experience. Caution and companionship is advised for all who venture into the deep forest or backcountry. So I heard something in the corn here. Hey, Chad, I heard something over here. Oh, this is, this is freaky. Corn can be so freaky. Oh. Ah! Before I began my investigations into the lure of Bigfoot, I traveled the world meeting people who live with the most amazing animals. The dynamics that surround these forest giants is very complex. Oh, this is so cool. As a skeptic, I'm on a mission, an adventure of a lifetime, to find evidence that if these Bigfoot creatures are real, I can once and for all put my doubts aside and share with the world that that sound of that simple crack in the forest may not just be a chipmunk. My name is Jason Kenzie. These are my chronicles into searching for Sasquatch. Oh. I hear something. Oh, I saw it. Around North America, there are sightings of creatures seven to ten feet tall, covered in hair, weighing 600 to 1,000 pounds. These creatures are known as Bigfoot. The Grassman is said to be a cryptid creature, having a heavy odor, long black hair, and bright orange eyes. It has earned the specific name Grassman from the large dens it supposedly makes out of grass and from its diet, which reportedly consists mainly of tall grass. These creatures are believed to be 7 to 10 feet tall, covered in hair, weighing 600 to 1,000 pounds. But they are not Bigfoot. Well, this is going to be very exciting, uh, Chad. We're going to be meeting the she squatches in a few minutes. You know, I can't wait to go out with them. And minus Jenna, she wasn't able to, to make it. But we're going to go on an expedition, search for any sign of Bigfoot. And this place looks beautiful out here. And I'm so looking forward to like, hey, maybe we can go for a little swim. Oh, oh, there's the she squatches now. Hey, Tammy, I think Jason and Chad are here. I'm Jen Cruz. I'm Tammy Trichel. We have a third member of our team, Jenna Grover. She's not here today, but together we three make up the She Squatchers. We're an all-female team of Bigfoot researchers that have been researching for seven years since 2015. And prior to that, we were psychics that ended up, I was doing missing persons cases and started doing work with paranormal investigations teams. <laughs> And uh, Tammy and I worked together on some of those cases and and uh, clearing out haunted houses. And people would uh, actually pay for me to fly out to their houses to close portals and remove dark entities from their home. And now we look for Bigfoot <laughs> and other cryptids. And some of the things that we were doing as psychics, looking at things from remote locations, from far away, uh, to see what was happening there. I discovered that I was very, very accurate with those types of things that so we call geographic remote viewing. It's different than what everyone else calls remote viewing or controlled remote viewing, where a lot of times they're just drawing on a piece of paper what they see in their mind's eye. We actually take our phones or a computer and we open it up to Google satellite imagery and we look at actual satellite photos of areas 
and when we see what we're looking for, such as Bigfoot, if we're looking for Bigfoot, uh, if we start seeing that what we ask is, can we please see Bigfoot? Is Bigfoot here? Is there any Bigfoot evidence here we can collect? And if there is, what we see on the image changes showing us a Bigfoot or something that indicates evidence. And then we touch the screen and drop a GPS pin on it. And then we go there if it's an accessible place. We go there. Do you think Bigfoot can see that you are looking at them? That's a good question. I think so. <laughs> I think so because there'll be times when um, I'm looking at the map and there'll be one you know, looking up at me and waving up at me like I'm up in the sky above them looking at them. So yeah, I think they can see us. I don't know. I, I, I sometimes think that they do. Uh, there was I was doing remote viewing for another uh, Bigfoot research team out of Ohio and uh, they had somebody who was famous from one of the big TV shows on TV right now with them. And uh, I knew that that person was, would probably run into the forest after whatever. And when I, I always say they're here and I say give them GPS coordinates and where they are around this dead end road. And uh, what I saw, I told them out to the north, I told them at the, at beyond the dead end of the road, and what I saw to the south of it, I saw very young ones doing this. Shh, like don't tell. So I, I just wrote it down and didn't send it to them, and I sent it to them the next day. I said, I, I saw, shh, don't tell. And so I didn't tell you this, because, and I knew it was because he would have ran after them and we didn't want that. So I told this, this friend, he's like, well, we did have activity from there. We're not gonna make Jason walk 1,400 miles. So we're gonna be always looking for places that are quite accessible uh, so that we can get out of the car and get there quite quickly and, uh, and catch them on film if we can and have those experiences before they run away. Yep, in the woods. We're, they're still in the woods, but yeah. it's just a lot easier for us to look on there and see that they're you know, only 500 yards into the woods instead of six miles back into the woods and good luck finding them. Go ahead and look for those red flags. This is how we found really, really intricately built den-like structures that were two stories high, that had fences that were eight to 10 feet tall sticks that were stabbed into the ground diagonally all around a large area in a very remote location on an Indian reservation in northern Minnesota. I'm actually a tribal member of the Red Lake Band of Chippewa Indians in northern Minnesota and it was on my reservation. And when I talked to the elders about what we found, they said there's no way that somebody built that. That isn't something that, that isn't how people would do that. It wasn't tied together. It wasn't screwed together or nailed together, it was weaved together. And it was in a location that nobody would have ever done that. So they definitely thought that Bigfoot was doing these buildings of these structures. Others had been found also um, in the area and by their DNR. And they know that Bigfoot is building them so they just back away slowly. <laughs> and now we're here in Ohio filming a documentary with Jason Kenzie collecting evidence and having a great time and great experiences and it's been a lot of fun looking for Bigfoot. So where are we going to go? Have you found anything around here? We're going to go to West Branch State Park. There is a hiking trail there that's actually very, very large. I think it's 1400 miles long. We're looking for Bigfoot that are going to be pretty accessible so it's not going to be days and days to hike in there. Uh, we're always you know, you can hike for days and days and find Bigfoot in remote locations, or you can look for them on a remote view. And find them a lot faster. <laughs> find them closer to something that's accessible. So that's what we do. As the sun moved across the sky, and as evening was just around the corner, after putting up the tent, we all jumped into our vehicles and journeyed to the location where locals have said they have seen these Bigfoot creatures in these forests. <laughs> So anyway, right now I'm with uh, Tammy and Jen, and we're heading to, what, what is the place that we're going to? Uh, Molnar something? Molnar Autobahn. It's a bird, yeah, it's a bird center. So that's where we're heading. This is where we're going to go and search during the day to see if we can find any evidence of the grass man. We're not talking about, you know, he smokes weed. We need to park at the dog park. That's going to be the closest way to get there. So we're here at this dog park. 
and this is where Jan and Tammy has said that there are families of Bigfoot in the forest here so we're going to take a little walk and uh, let's hope that maybe we can find some evidence. What do you think Jen? I think that's great because although we saw it last night and I think they were going down to the water. Oh. Well come on let's go. It wasn't long before we started seeing recognizable impressions that look familiar. Signs that we have all seen in completely different areas yeah, of North America. Two over here. And this is where we saw them last night. Over here too. Over here and right here. Yeah, over here and right here. Of course, it doesn't mean that they're made by Bigfoot because this place is quite used by humans. Why would someone very interesting. Yeah. It's just two, two, two. Here, two, two. There, yeah. two there. That's the thing, is yeah. two, two, two. Why? Yeah, exactly. And this is where our first drop pin was last night. Mm -hmm. We thought they were going to the water. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to believe a 900 pound beast would snap a little twig, but Jen has a great idea that just might put this myth to bed. So I'm thinking that Chad should try to break this tree this little stick next to the ones that are broken with one hand and see how if he can do it and probably one, pretty flexible it'll probably be hard okay well let's give it, give it a try, try. no with your okay. one thumb okay with one thumb well you gotta go on a different one now Put it over here. Yeah. thumb and a finger like that just like this they do break pretty easy okay so i'm going to see if i can break this with my, my fingers, just like the this one. So. so it wasn't that hard to do, but the good thing is I just killed Mother Nature and I got something I can cook marshmallows on tonight. I was just about to examine this small tree X when the sounds of the birds chirping were drowned out by Chad. He found something interesting. Jason, come here. I think I got some footprints. It looks like there's toes. Come and check this out. Oh yeah, look at this. So there's footprints down here. That would be crazy if there were big foot footprints. But look, down there. They look like boots though. Jason, there's two giant footprints. Giant, bigger than my feet. Well, I'm looking, but I don't. Just a sec. I see that, but I'm looking to see if they're actually footprints or if they're. Uh, oh my god! Look, yeah, but that looks like a shoe. That looks like a. Or a mid tarsal break. No, that's a boot. That doesn't look like toes on that one. Well, that one looks like it could be toes. I remember it rained. They got washed out last night. Mm-hmm. So there really shouldn't be any footprints here. Who would walk straight across? Well, unless they were fishing. That makes sense. Here, what do you guys think this is? What are they fishing for, Jason? Is it water stream? That looks like toes on it. Okay, so we have to be very careful when we see this kind of stuff because it could easily be just a fisherman with boots on. I mean, they're so fresh that it could be a fisherman walking with boots on and we might bump into him because last night it rained so hard they should have been washed away so they're pretty fresh like from this morning i thought chad said that there were toes on the footprint one had looked like it has toes but just one and the mud is so mushy that there shouldn't just be one there's no way he couldn't, he couldn't have walked and then wait a second you know what Maybe Bigfoot only has one leg, and all he does is hop. That would explain everything. The boot marks, I mean, footprints were interesting, but I wanted to have a closer look at that massive tree X the she-squatches and I found earlier. Okay, we're gonna go check out uh, tree X, uh, potential tree X.
<laughs> that is cool. It's an uprooted tree. Well, it's uprooted, yes. It is uprooted, that's for sure. And it was not in the ground there. Whoops, it's very rotten. <laughs> oh, it was in the ground there. Oh. Got knocked over. Now let's see what this one does. No, this is solid. I wandered off away from the group because I just wanted to look around a little bit more. I heard something over here as I was walking. We're trying to find Tammy and Chad. Tammy! Chad! Okay, where are you? Polo! Yeah, but I heard something over here though. Just going over here to investigate. Probably nothing, maybe a bird. Wow, it's so beautiful out here. You have to be very careful when you're hiking through the forest. Some of these forests are so thick that if you just walk up the trail by 30 feet, you will be missing in action. Where I'm from in BC, it happens all the time. Like search and rescue, they're busy 24 seven. Wow, it is so beautiful out of here. Look, look at all the colors. Can you see that behind me? Like over there too, look at that. Wow, you can't even see how beautiful it is out here. Are we? Okay, so, oh, there's Tammy. I think that's Tammy. Oh my gosh, it's a Sask Tammy. Tammy Squatch. Yeah, I figured it was. I'm only kidding. I wasn't sure what the trail was, but shh, between you and me. Some researchers believe that they pull down these, these these trees, right? So you can see you can see the tree is pulled down, and it's like an arch. And this one has nothing holding it down. And my thing is, in order for that to be down, there has to be something holding it, because this, if I take this and I pull it down. If I don't have something holding it, right, it's just gonna go right back up. So the only way to do this is I would have to, I would have to hold it there. I would have to mold it. If I held this for, you know, maybe a, a day or so, it would stay like this after a while, right? I can't see a Bigfoot doing this, right? But I could easily touch this underneath this. Yeah. Of course, you know, uh, if I piss off these big parts, they could just grab me, tie me to the bottom of this. And okay, we can see over there something's been crossing the road and climbing up on that side. But there's a barbed wire fence. But that means we could collect hair. hair. This right? over there. <laughs> Check it out, guys. And so, as is in usual She Squatchers adventures, whenever we stop by the road, the police come. After a few hours of searching and with no more evidence to be found, we decided to head back to Camp One. So, right now, I'm going to be contacting uh, Jenna. Uh, she's one of the she squatchers. Uh, she's not with us, but she's going to uh, talk to us on the computer from, where does she live? West Park, North Dakota. Yeah, she lives in North Dakota, and she has something important to tell us. So, we're just waiting for her to come on. Hey, Jenna, how are you? Hey, I'm excellent, how are you? Doing great. So, you have some information 
that you want to tell us. I have been doing a little bit of remote viewing on my side and I have found two different areas and I found a group of Bigfoot. And I will be sending you the locations. One area that had one Bigfoot. It was over by the water's edge. Perfect. Awesome. Let's check that out, guys. Yeah, we're going to yeah. check it out. Jenna, it was nice talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you just hung up on Jenna. <laughs> oh, does it actually yes. matter? Yes. It just hangs up. Oh, crap. <laughs> I thought it would check out. <laughs> well, enough fun and games. Jenna, you know I love you, but it's time to head out and explore the darkness for monsters. But first, I gotta make a pit stop. I'm going to go and interview this guy. He has an interesting story about Bigfoot Encounter. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say, and this is gonna be great. The guy showed up, just getting him hooked up with audio. This is gonna be quite fun. Hi Chandler, how are you doing? I'm doing well, what's up, bud? Good, good. So you have some interesting stories uh, about uh, Bigfoot or is it the Ohio grass map? I would like to say the one that we have discovered down south on my buddy's property is more close to the Bigfoot, but what we're seeing up here is probably a little bit more towards the grassland. So what is the difference between Bigfoot and grassland? From what I am seeing, I am down south there is, I'm getting a lot more claw marks. We're actually coming up with deer with twisted heads. We found three already on the property. One, really? One buck, we've had two doe already found on the property, and he's got sheep herding dogs. And he'll call us at like three in the morning saying if we've sent anyone down to his property hunting, so but we won't get no one down there. So the deer had their heads twisted right off? Oh no, straight 180 backwards. Really? Stuck 180 backwards. Wow. So was there anything else taken from the deer? A lot of broken branches around the area. There's a lot of claw marks going down into the ravine down towards the holler. Yeah. So what do you think did it to the deer? From the force of something like that, it's not going to be a human because ain't no way you're going to catch up to a deer and physically yeah. be able to grab its head and turn it that way. So the, You have to have speed and strength for that. You have to think about why they would do that. I mean, it's not eaten. I would personally say pushing into territory. He, the, the guy was like, God, I hate Bambi. <laughs> I, I feel like they're a bit territorial. Yeah. Just because if someone's going to go wandering into your area, you're not going to like that very much. Did you guys eat? the deer? Unfortunately, you know. no. I don't want to eat a bruised deer like that. No? No. That's going to be tainted meat. So have you been growled at or, or? I have been in the woods at about 4 a.m. and we've heard some weird shrieks before. Nothing out, of, nothing like that I could recognize out of the ordinary. Because I, I have gone looking through the woods but like there was one specific time. It was about 3, 3.15. We had just got down, we had just gotten out of the tree stands. We're getting ready to head out of the woods yeah. for the night. And there was this weird shriek coming up from the back of the property out towards the cattle where he has them all in the barns. Yeah. And we, we had called him let him know, hey, there's something going on down by your barn. You may want to go check it out. He gets down there and he goes into the cattle barn and comes back out. His brake lines are ripped off. Really? That's just what he had said to us. Holy cow, that's fucking... Oh. Woo. You good there? So, yeah, the, you know, these Bigfoots, they just do nasty stuff. Oh yeah, one of the one of the more main things I am seeing down there is there's a lot of big branches about some of them about six, eight inches around. Yeah. They're snapped off. They're not cut off like by a saw, by a chainsaw, nothing. They're full on snapped off. Really? And they're not low hanging exactly all of them. Well. I've been around this area for years. I ain't seen one bear and I'm in the woods twenty four seven. Yeah. In there we have tree stands sitting up in there. We've had a couple tree stands actually ripped out of trees. Really? He's had three ripped out of this tree and three of his tree stands ripped out in just the past year. And really? it's not by hunters because he has his entire property surrounded by barbed wire fence. Wow. So when they ripped it down, did you find it on the ground? Oh yeah, we found it in the ground. One of the seats was smushed into metal. The metal the metal bars that come out for the legs that pin it against the back of yeah. the tree, they're smushed in like they've been bent. Like they were someone was holding them and did this. Yeah. I have a feeling if you stick more towards the creek beds, because there's some cave systems down in there he knows about, and there yeah. is some he has not explored yet, because he has been mapping out that property slowly for 10 years now. Yeah. I have a feeling there is some stuff. If you go in there, you will find that may not exactly want you to be there. So you believe that okay. these Bigfoot creatures exist? Yeah, I can say without a doubt. I'm so glad to meet you and to hear your story, and I think I have to go in this area and see if I can find any evidence. I'm in Ohio searching for the grass man. The she squatchers gave me a great interview and Chad found what could possibly be a footprint. And after talking to Jenna, she gave us a location where we might find these creatures. I had a great interview with an eyewitness and now we are headed to the dark forest to do a night investigation. 
in this area and we found those footprints down down there right when we first got here both myself and tammy were looking across the water into that little peninsula of woods and i just kept feeling drawn there and drawn there and drawn there but we hadn't remote viewed that area at all until tonight so when we were looking for where are we going to go tonight i was like well let's look around this area and see if there's anything over there and when i looked over there i was seeing very solid sometimes when we re we do this geographic remote viewing when we see something it's it's you know it's not solid solid where you're not seeing a lot of detail in their facial features this particular one i'm seeing his ears i'm seeing this crest on his forehead i'm seeing his nose i'm seeing his muscular neck and the way he's looking this blue dot is where we are this blue dot is where we're sitting in this car this is where i'm seeing him over there and he is a very large male and he is looking that way onto this peninsula and where do we find the footprints we found the footprints right here earlier today right there let's get going see if we can find these these creatures we've, we've brought our chairs along because i think we should just sit down and make some noise and see if they come and check us out that is a great idea so let's go good night so we've got some gloves pack up the gloves this is going to be exciting oh, i hope these creatures come around us i mean that is if they're real oh i have this on that was so remember jason that's where we're going to go across the water to, to the Bigfoot that we saw. But I also saw a group of them over there about, I would say maybe 50 to 100 feet in, 25 to 100 feet in. The woods straight back that way. I went out into the woods. Did you see them too? Yes, I did. You should put your light red because she's blue. And then we have different colors, which is nice. Bigfoot likes blue. Did, does he? Yeah. Really? Yeah. This is the plan. I'm going to be following the she-squatchers and we're going to go into the forest where the she-squatchers say that there are Bigfoots. This is going to be great. I'm so excited. These people I'm with are just amazing. They're just so much fun. I love hiking and camping anyway, so I got like a moon that is huge, it's not full. Well, come on guys, let's get going. Bigfoot is not waiting for us. Hello, Bigfoot. I just want to say hi. We're going to come in. I'm scaring the forest for any eye shine. And then it dawns on me, where's Chad? And then suddenly something from the side of me makes me jump. Oh, it's Chad. Water. Okay, what happened? So I'm walking along the bank and I'm on the edge and I, I was right on the edge and it just collapsed. It just broke. And, and you fell into the water. <laughs> well, I slid into it. My boots are full. Really? Full. No, literally. How? My boots are full of water. Listen. Oh. <laughs> well, I can't carry my chair. <laughs> oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's not funny. I mean, it's not funny. <laughs> It's phone. funny. Hang that is second. funny. Okay. Did this get wet? No. So, so Chad fell into the water, like into the mud. That is that's funny. Literally, the bank. I'm on it. These are full of. I can't even walk. They're like ten pounds. Okay, well, dump him and let's get going. No, he needs to stay. Oh, look at his ass. No way! I'll freeze my ass. Oh no! This ass. Jesus what? Lord! I'm gonna ask you my boots. No, literally, I went all the way into the lake. That, that doesn't bring bad. So for that some reason, good. my lens. I know is it gets rid of the bad. I have a green one. Fuck. The bank just freaking broke, dude. Here's my lens. I gotta put away. Oh, it's in my. It's in my oh yeah, dump it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> It's not funny. Not funny at all. Oh. 
This is amazing. See, I told you. Okay, let's see the other boot. I oh, will do it. If you're wondering why we're laughing so hard, it's because we couldn't stop imagining a six foot nine Chad looking over the water for a monstrous beast and then slipping and sliding ass first into the muddy water. It's a shame I wasn't there to film it. No, uh, come on. Listen, everything has happened and I decided to go walk out there and look at stuff and and he'll just drop. That's what you get for not waiting for the class. That's what you're doing over there. So with Chad warming up in the truck, the she squatchers, Sherry and myself, headed off into the forest. Let's see if we can find any evidence of Bigfoot. We were here earlier. Uh, this is a spot that everyone tells us we should go. Oh, I'm in the beautiful Ohio forests searching for Bigfoot. With me are the she squatchers, Chad Daitma and Sherry Barcia. I've heard some interesting Bigfoot encounters. Everything was going good until. Sherry is such a trooper. It's amazing how she can keep going even after a nasty fall. But once she picked herself up, we carried on into the forest, hoping nothing else would happen to us. Well, except for maybe seeing a 10 foot hairy monster that might scream at us and hopefully doesn't carry me off. So Tammy saw eye shine over here. What do you see? It looked like there's movement. I just put something over that. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? It was, it looked like a bird skeleton, but it was huge. Really? Yes. I make my way down through the bushes to see if I can catch the eye shine on camera. I have to admit, I'm feeling uneasy as I'm staring off into the darkness and not knowing what is out there. I can't help but think about an interesting interview I had with an eyewitness who claims to have seen a group of Bigfoot not too far from here. Hi, my name's Jack Warren and I've been on this journey for eight years looking for Bigfoot. Jack, hi. Hi, how, how are you doing, Jason? Good, how are you doing? I'm doing well. So I've heard that you have some interesting stories. You've had a, a couple Class A Bigfoot sightings. Can you tell me the first uh, sighting that you had? Well, the first sighting we had was late August of last year. It was in Coshocton County, Ohio, with a group I am uh, my founding member of, Coshocton County Bigfoot Group. And we were out in the middle of a cornfield on these roads and uh, we stopped and my friend which is a relative of the grandson whose grandfather used to own the property and how long uh, has he owned the property for oh god i think it was in the family for probably 150 years nobody ever was allowed on that property to hunt or to walk or anything. Really? He did not even hunt on the property. We all got out of our vehicles. We had thermal. The night vision we were using, Jay left the SD card in his wife's car that he just bought because he yeah. knew the one in it was full. And all of a sudden, they spotted one walking away from us in the field. Now, the corn 
It was about six and a half to seven foot tall. And this thing was a good two and a half feet above that. Really? So you saw the shoulders and then the head? I saw the head, the shoulders, and about a third of the back. And it was massive across the shoulders. And it, of course, on night vision, it was gray. Yeah. And it, it just walked away, and I, I probably watched it for about three seconds. And I passed it on. I want to see one up and close and personal yeah. during the day, so I know what I saw. Yeah, I want one to kind of come up close to me. Maybe right. pick me up, throw me around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Put like a up. little ball. Yeah. Right. I'm like, uh -huh. stop following me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, My second Class A sighting was in the same field. It was in April. Farmers were out there doing their thing. Wow, close. Okay. Yes. Carry on. Up on the hill, probably 300 yards from us, there's these buildings, there's five of them, and what he does is he raises chickens. And then there's a wood line, wood plot behind that. Then there's a mowed area, and then there's another wood plot with a house up here. They're over here looking at this side of the hill, and I'm walking around just minding my own business and checking things out, and I seen something move and it was black, it was unsettled to the area. And this was nighttime? No, this was during the oh, day, during the day. Okay. in the afternoon. And I'm watching this thing and all of a sudden it walks out on two legs into the opening, comes down, probably took maybe four steps and then squatted down and was looking right at me. And I'm watching it and I didn't have my camera, I didn't have my phone, everything was in the car. That's always the case. I always think these Bigfoots, they have some kind of powers where they just tell us, okay, your equipment's gonna fail. So you share it with a Bigfoot? Yeah, so I'm, they're looking at him. He's looking at me or it. I didn't know if it was a male or female. And then all of a sudden it got up, walked back into the woods, came down, because there was no leaves on the trees yet. Nothing was greening up. Walked down the hill and it crouched back down and there were three more black, unsettled things around it. Really? So I'm thinking there was probably more of them in there, and he was just curious. Hello? Can you hear me? I just want to be your friend. Guys, it's walking. It's walking over there. I heard it. Right there. I'm, I'm standing in the direction looking. Whatever it is, it's walking away from me. And then... Okay, so... Uh, Wait, that's a goose. It's a goose. It was a goose? Okay. So as you can hear, the Sasquatches are flying away. This is incredible. Sasquatches fly. <laughs> it's a goose. Duh. But anyway, so we're out there. We saw some eye shine. Heard some growling. Um, a wood knock. Um, that's about it for the moment. Uh, we're going to sit down here right now. And we're just going to sit and listen and see if these creatures will come to us. What do you say, guys? I say that is a great idea. All right. Let's go and sit. From the five feet. <laughs> we are here. The trek was exhausting. The adventure was incredible. I think I broke a nail. There's a lot of bent trees here. Like, look at that one there, too. Come on, I want you to say something. I want you to howl at us. Growl. Whoop! Whoop! Maybe I sound too girly. Whoop! You want me to whoop? Whoop! Yeah, go ahead, whoop. Whoop! It didn't take long when Sherry spotted something on her fleur. You see? So, like, the eye moving this way. It's going this way. I moved closer to the area. I wanted to see exactly what Sherry was looking at. Okay, Sherry is seeing eye shine. 
and it's moving through the forest. Lucky for us, she's recording it. Oh, shit. I think I saw it move. Yeah, I saw it move. Okay, there is something behind this tree where my light is and it's moving like back and forth. Do you hear that? Did you see that? As soon as I heard the unidentified sound, a light source appeared. Maybe a possible eye shine? I'm not sure. But what I do know is I didn't see it in real time. I'm trying so hard not to crap my pants as I move closer. tracking something in the forest. It's going behind trees. The sea squatches are behind me, about 25 feet. And I'm walking in prickles. Get away from me. I wish I could explain how scary this is. You see green on your screen. I see darkness. I know what I'm doing is dangerous. So please, leave this kind of work to professionals. With this said, I'm Hello? going to take up a course in how to be a professional. Now, excuse me, I am trying not to get eaten here. Tell me when I get to the tree. Tell me when I get to the tree. Right here. Either a log or a giant rock was thrown. Something moved. And it was big. As it crashed through the forest, I jumped. Hello? It's probably just the wind causing trees to hit each other. I think. I think I saw the shadow of it move. We heard a knock coming from over there. But if it was here before, it's not here now. He ran off. He scared him. For the next couple of hours, we stayed quiet, scanning the area, hoping to experience whatever came around us. With no more activity, we headed back to the vehicles. Okay, so now we're done for the night. And we're gonna head back to um, camp. We're gonna build a fire, and then we're just gonna chill. <laughs> and it's all muck. You so and your tree. I finally get stood up, and I'm soaking it. wet, and I'm mad, and my <laughs> boots are full of water, and I'm sunk in the muck. So I go to take a step, and then I go to pull my other step, and it doesn't come. And, I freaking go face first back in it on my way to the beach. And For real. We missed filming that. Yes, we missed it. When the morning sun rose, we headed out to have some fun and look around before going back into the forest. We have Scotland Highlander cows. These are the hairiest cows in the world. Look at them. They are so cute. Sasquatch, lost on me, Bigfoot, show me the way. Looks 
like there could be a roof. You can see how it's all being placed on top. Because I figure that whatever makes this will sit in there and just watch hikers walk by. This one is in the ground, right here. This one is not in the ground, it's placed Move it. there. Yeah. Okay, and now there's another big one over here that is placed between those two, right there in the middle. Yeah, and that's what the support is. Mm -hmm. Then they put everything over top of it. There's a lot of little ones all around. It looks like there's a room to this way. And there's a room I this wish way. we had more time to examine this tree structure, but I had an interview to go to with a local adventurer who knows these words. Todd, hi. Nice <laughs> to meet you, Jason. Yeah, nice to meet you too. How are you doing? Doing good. My name is Todd Shalott. Um, I've been a paranormal investigator since the late 90s. Uh, within the last two years, I joined forces with Buckeye uh, Bigfoot researchers, and I've been working with them ever since on Finding Bigfoot. I've heard that you have had some interesting experiences with like Bigfoot. Yes. Have you been, has it scared you at times? No, I'm, I'm an out, I have an outdoorsman to begin with. So I'm used to the sights and sounds when I'm out, out in the woods. Um, it's, it's perks my curiosity more than anything. Uh, when I, cause I want to find out where these sounds are coming from, see if I can identify these sounds. So have you had a class A sighting? Uh, to date, no, I have not. What experiences have you had uh, around Bigfoot? Um, in this particular area that we're gonna go into today, or t this evening, um, I've, heard, I've heard groans and grunts. Um, I've heard knocking on trees. I've seen trees bent over in a peculiar way, but not snapped. Nothing holding the top of the tree down onto the ground. Um, there's one formation out there, which I can't explain the trees are small enough that where a creature could move these, but the trees, the root systems are down, both trees are down, the root systems are end to end. I'm very curious how they got like that. And part of me is thinking, you know, is this something that uh, Bigfoot or some creature has moved around? So have you seen shadows or movement, like footsteps? I, I can say I've seen movement, but it's been so far away that you know I couldn't make out exactly what it was. Tell me about this area a little bit. This is West Branch State Park. Um, the area we are in now are hiking trails and mountain bike trails. It's also snowmobile trails in the wintertime. A little bit over nine miles of trails through here. And I mainly use this area. I'm an avid backpacker. Yeah. So if I'm training to go on the Appalachian Trail, yeah. I load my pack up 32 pounds and I walk this as much as I can to get used to that. Yeah, when we're out tonight, if something happens, like if, if we get charged at or attacked by a Sasquatch, don't you worry. I'm pretty sure that I can outrun one of these camera people. <laughs> so, so we're good. To be fast, you just have to be faster than everybody else. Exactly, right? When Todd mentions the many strange tree structures he has come across while hiking these woods, it got me thinking how many numerous forest animals utilize the diverse forest flora and fauna that they use for their habitat. More than 1,200 wildlife species in the United States, including mammals, birds, fish, reptiles, amphibians, and insects, depend on dead or dying wood for their habitat. Beavers will cut down trees using their powerful teeth. They do this to build their home. Ninety percent of all birds gather pieces of tree branches to build nests high in trees. One species of bird called boring owls will dig holes in the ground or will occupy gopher holes. Squirrels, possums, and raccoons will use dead wood as a nesting site to raise their young. In the wild, gorillas will build their nests on the ground or in trees using branches, leaves, and other accessible plant materials. Maybe these Bigfoot creatures build their tree structures to hide themselves from the animals they prey on. I say this because most tree structures I have found are not made to keep them dry from the rain. The thing cool about this area is, I mean, Ohio's known for 
for uh, Bigfoot sightings to begin with. How many sightings do you think have been seen in this park that we're in? Did I know of? I know of five sightings, reported sightings. So 500 guys, 500. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna lavish on this. There's one now. Oh, great, wait, no, it's the bike. I want to say thank you so much. Oh, thank you. You know, it was nice talking to you, and what are we waiting for? Let's go and explore. That's it, right? Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> Todd has joined us. We're going into the forest right now. Like every other documentary, we're going to see if we can find any evidence of these creatures that we call Sasquatch. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Tammy. Hi, Tammy. Hi. Here comes, here comes the rest. Hey, slow pokes. What? Slow pokes. What we are going to do is we're going to be going probably maybe half a mile into these forests along this path. And then we are going to go off the trail into the forest and we're going to go in maybe 200, 300 feet. Then we're going to sit down in the darkness and see if something will come around us. It's so much fun. Todd seems like a really nice guy. Woo, carry me out, I'm done. <laughs> so these creatures that people refer to as Bigfoot, they could easily use these these tunnels to go right through from one side to the other side so, you know, people won't see them. Of course, for a nine foot creature that's weighing a thousand pounds, this is still a little small, you would think. So maybe new juveniles, I don't know. But the adventure is always continuing. The girls and I and Todd were just sitting here in the dark and we're just waiting, waiting to see if anything comes around us. Because as you know, these creatures can be very curious. Chad and Sherry have gone up a few hundred feet. Jen, I don't see anything over here. Hey, Jen, you won't believe what I found over here. Oh, wow, that is cool. Tammy, this is neat. I could climb up that like Tarzan. I wonder if there's anything watching us. I thought I heard something walking. Hello? Whoop. Do you think we should do a wood knock? Do you hear that? That is one of the other researchers walking in the forest. Did you hear that? That was the camera person giggling. We're hearing something way off in the distance, trying to figure out if it's coyotes or possibly these creatures. Maybe is that the five tree right feet, there? Yeah, I'm gonna say five feet past that tree. Okay. Put your light back up. See that tree straight on ahead? Oh, I see. There's a rock. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah, it's a rock. Look at this tree oh, break. Yeah. Look, it's twisted too. It's really old, but it's definitely twisted. It's twisted in, Ben. Yeah. Tonight's investigation was a slow one. Well, it's a great thing that I enjoy the friends that I'm with. The next morning couldn't come slow enough. It was time for me to say goodbye to Jen and Tammy. I will 
miss you, Jen. Oh, I'm gonna miss you too. You guys have a safe trip, okay? This was such a fun adventure. It was really fun. And uh, I'll see you guys in the near future. I miss him already. After we said our goodbyes, Chad, Sherry, and myself drove to check out a whole new location. No one won't leave me. I know the truth I say. I'm lost and need Bigfoot to show me. Hopefully, we have better luck finding these creatures here. Searching for Sasquatch. Lost and need Bigfoot to show me the way. From Canada to Texas, from Cali to the Everglades, we search everywhere, but we don't know where they stay. We forge relationships. But I know he'll find me way before I'll find his home. No one believes me. I know the truth I say. Okay, so Chad and myself and Sherry, we are going to be going down this trail. It's going to be our last night here. See if we can find any evidence of this grass man that everyone talks about. Or grass women. Hello, is there any grass men up here? That was perfect, I think. <laughs> Go. That's a door. So there, there is a trail over here. You have to be very careful because of these thorns all over the place. Ouch. It's amazing how we're in an area that allegedly is well known for many grassman sightings or Bigfoot. Oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, there's definitely something uh, that has been walking around here because all the grass is, is trampled. I mean... I don't know what I would do if I came walking in on a nest, an active nest. I'm pretty sure that they would be very pissed off, these creatures. I'm like, hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, you're giving birth. How the, you know what? I'll just leave. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Talk to you later. Okay, there's a tree break right there. Of course, I'm not saying that this tree break is from a Bigfoot. Definitely not from a chipmunk. <laughs> I love using chipmunk pungs. Actually, this uh, tree does look like it's being manipulated, basically saying, don't enter. There's a path right there. And these are in the way. See? Oh, wow. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, it, it kind of opens up. I mean, I could definitely see someone, uh, something living back here. I mean, this definitely would be ideal for a family, right? Yeah, it's not easy to get to. No, it's not. They got water. I don't see any tracks, though, of anything. so cool if there was a big giant axe right in the middle of this place. And, you know, there's a little tree break there. Obviously, it's probably storm damage, but how would a storm, you know, get through all these trees? It could be ice damage. Oh, yeah. Looks pretty old. Yeah, this would be a great place for them to hunker down. Escape routes, hills all the way around it. Yeah, we're in a gully. This could, could be quite dangerous for us, right? They mm -hmm. can come from either side and ambush us. Lucky for you, you have a secret weapon. My bum knee, so I'm just going to stay and get eaten. Okay, that's a pretty steep hill over there. What's that? That's pretty steep. That is steep. I mean, so... Hey, well, there's these, uh, these branches here. Just as I was inspecting this dead tree, my eye caught something directly in front of me. Look at this. Okay, so this is something. Look at this. None of them. They're all touching the ground. They've all been... You see this? Yeah. Look. They're all been weaved. Yeah. None are... It is all interweaved. I'm looking up at the top. Yeah. Look at that. There we go. That's what. And like nothing is touching. Nothing is attached to the ground. Oh, this one is. This one is attached to the ground. Might be jabbed in. No, it's alive. It's alive. This one is just resting on it. They use that live one to weave. Oh, well, that one. This one is jammed in the ground. This one's just balanced. This one here. is jammed in the ground. This is just balanced here. Well, no, 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 it just broke. This one is just, look at that. Okay, so this is really odd to see, you know? And this is kind of the stuff that we want to come across. Something out of the ordinary. I was beginning to, uh, you know, lose hope that maybe there isn't any of these creatures around, but Something or someone would have had to make these. So, if there's these ones, I bet you they'll be. Folks, so the, the question is why? Why do they put these here? To sleep? Can you imagine? No, oh, me gonna fall asleep now. Oh, no rain gonna touch me now. God, that would be pretty dumb to, you know, think that this is gonna like save them from rain. Of course, let's see if there's any hair on this. If only Sasquatches shed like dogs, we'd already proved their existence. There would be like hair all over the place. So I'm in this area away from everyone. To check this out, man. Look how. As I am filming this footage, I had no idea that there was something watching me from the darkness. Maybe it's a star. Maybe it's a firefly. Or maybe it's a 900 pound creature. Freaky it is back there. I don't know if you can see that. But it is so scary back here you know if these creatures do exist this would be an ideal place for them to hide out I just want to remind you I had no idea there was something beside me 
crazy. I could scare the hell out of anyone. Before you get committed to the idea that this light is a star, it appears that the light has dropped to the ground, making it more likely that this is a living creature, like a 900 pound Bigfoot. Maybe. Chad said he found a fresh break. Chad, did he find something? Through all that. See all that stuff I had to get pulled through? Yeah. So where are we walking? We're heading that way towards the closed road. Looks like we're coming out into a field. Oh yeah. Into a field. There's the cornfield road there, but we can walk through this way. You know what, if I see one of these creatures right now, I'm gonna name it Corn Man. Why not? Someone called Sasquatch Momo. I'm looking for the Ohio Corn Man. He's not in there. What I need is a microwave and some butter. Okay, coming. So I heard something in the corn here. Hey Chad, I heard something over here. Oh, this is, this is freaky. Corn can be so freaky. Okay, we heard a howl. God, my camera was off too. Okay, we heard a howl. No, that sounded like a, like, very wolf-like. Could have been a wolf. Duh. Damn it. It always happens when you have the camera not rolling. We got the coyotes. Oh, listen. It's a whole bunch of coyotes. There's still that coyotes we've heard since we've been here. Yeah. Well, that was long too, that was a long howl. On the way back to the truck, we were hoping to hear another howl. We didn't drive too far when Chad oh, so spotted nice. something in the forest. So we're just gonna go through the forest and see what we can find. Chad was adamant he spotted two large eyes nine feet off the ground, watching us from the forest as we were driving by. If I knew what was about to happen, I probably wouldn't have left the truck. <laughs> Who am I kidding? Of course I would have probably left the truck. This is called searching for Sasquatch, not sitting in the truck looking out the window for Sasquatch. Oh yeah, look at that. Right here. Look at that. Like it was trying to make a tree x <laughs> Yeah, this is so fresh. Look at that, it's still wet. Oh, look here too. Look at that. That must have just happened. Like seriously. Well maybe not this one, because the leaves are dead, but I heard something. Oh for sakes. Last light's dead. Nah. Okay. 
Look at that. It's an X. That is an X. Hold this while I look at it closer. Okay, so finally, it's got an X. And uh, this is at least a day old because there's spider webs all over it. But yeah, this is neat. See, it would be very strange for it to drop out of where? Where, where is it going to drop out of? I mean, I guess, yeah, there's some limbs there, but still, just have It's another X, Jason. Where? Shining my light on it, filming it. Yeah. It's a Y, too. Hello? Hello? Can you come out? And say hi. We just want to be a friend. Hello? So Chad and I are in complete darkness. I know it doesn't look like we are, but this uh, night vision, you know, we can't see within two feet in front of ourselves. So this creature or creatures could easily just walk up on us with their one leg, right? Because you know, that's what they have. Hello? We just want to be a friend. Please don't eat me. I don't taste good at all. Um, Chad tastes like chocolate. So we have to be very careful that we don't wander too far because we could easily get lost in here. I mean, we must be 300 feet from the truck, maybe more. Oh, nice. Well, oh shit. shit. Something moved behind us. Behind us? Yes. Okay. I am sure I saw something looking back at me. But what was about to happen next caught me off guard. I don't know if I got this on camera. But for a split second I thought I saw something. I wouldn't have been so scared, but deep down, I just knew that Chad could outrun me with those damn long legs of his. Did you see that? Did you see the eye shine looking at us? I knew something was there watching us. Keep a close eye on that small tree in the middle of the frame. Oh, oh hey, right there. I thought I saw an eye I have to keep reminding myself that I'm hunting for a massive creature that if it wanted to, could kill us in a heartbeat. Hello? I thought I saw some peeking, actually. Is there a big tree there or is it just my imagination? Now I'm not saying that this is a Bigfoot, but what I am saying that I have not seen not even a hint of any chipmunks or squirrels in the vicinity. What I believe is the reason why we only see one eye is because the Bigfoot's head is so big that it only has to come out halfway, revealing only one eye. I know I say this in all my documentaries, but you know, when you're out here in the forest at night, your imagination, it can make you see anything that you want to see. Right now, we, we kind of want to see a Bigfoot, so every little movement and shadow is a Bigfoot, even if it's a mouse or a, a, a bunny. Despite the thrill of our walk in the dark forests, it was time for Chad and I to call it a night. 
It was the end of the search for the Ohio Grassman. Yet given my expanding experience, I wonder about the multitudes of reports and the cross-continent lore. Maybe it's meant to keep people out of the forest. Perhaps the very bipedal cryptids are related. That is, if they do exist. I'm quite certain there is something, and it's not nothing. And I felt sad to say goodbye to my friends and to end another expedition. This needs more research and more evidence, more knowledge. This book is writing itself. My name is Jason Kenzie, and I'm still searching for Sasquatch. And so let the adventures continue. My time here is done, and I have to get out of here. Todd, it was so nice. It's a pleasure, you. Jason. Yeah, you too. It's a pleasure working with you. Tammy, Give I'm going to miss you, Tammy. Now I'll miss you too. And you, my friend, get your ass over here. Our time's not done anymore. No, you know it's it. not. But I'm going to miss you anyway, you freaking Sasquatch. I'll miss you more. Actually, I drove in with him. So. I'm going to miss you more. 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 I'm going to miss you